Have you ever found a quest so vomit-inducingly guilty of leaving your time clean out of your pockets that you just want it? A relatable subject, I'm sure. Today's culprit comes from none other than Dragon's Dogma 2. If you enjoy my suffering today, then you're a bad person. It all began when I was abruptly stopped for a chat by Mr. Whiskers. What did you think of that story? Long story short, the beggar doesn't seem to be making much money from his stories. Mr. Whiskers doesn't find them particularly engaging and will not be subscribing. We're then prompted to find out how he earns his dosh. I ecstatically agree with the idea, and the mission begins. By now, it had been 10 minutes. This guy talks nearly as much as I do. While waiting, I decide to replenish my servant supply, returning to the square only to see that the prick was still going. He tells more fictional stories than a politician. And of course, after nearly 16 minutes, the fucker leaves while I'm taking a leak. Should I have paused one out of the room? Probably. But I'm going to gloss over that. I decided that difficult times called for extreme measures committing a grievous sin that I would typically never resort to. I looked it up. Look, okay, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm only human. You weren't there. <clears throat> it turns out that the beggar, we'll call him Dickbag Dingleknuts. I don't care what his real name is. It turns out that Mr. Dingleknuts was down in the slums at a very open plan alcoholic establishment. Arriving, we are treated to something truly glorious. The end is never the end, is never the end, is never the end. The hour's grown late. Hilda's going to have my hide. <laughs> After a further 10 minutes of repeatedly stapling my hand to pump, we're finally on the move again. Insanity is setting in, but we have to be nearing the end. Another minute of following Sir Dickbag rewards us with him entering an unremarkable looking building and locking the door. Right, door's locked. That For another be... three minutes. <sighs> Before emerging from the building as a whole new man a wealthier man. We take his beggar dress up and follow the fucker for another four minutes. <laughs> we finally arrive at his home, where it turns out that the beggar is less of a beggar than we were first led to believe. Off wandering about again, I see. Though give me five minutes with the fucker and I'll make him into one. Desiring nothing more than to have a negative effect on Dickbag's life, I rat him out to his wife. She is skeptical, but nonetheless hatches a plan to reveal the truth. I will place these clothes somewhere about the house. His reaction when he finds them will doubtless be very telling. Almost one hour of my life, and it's not even finished yet. Don't worry though, I'll make sure to finish it one way or another. My mood sufficiently ruined, I head to the only place I can think of that can help turn it all around. A pub. As a great man once said, alcohol is both the cause and solution to all life's problems. As two negatives make a positive, however, I make sure to always drink my alcohol in pairs, thereby nullifying the cause, creating only solutions. Mathematicians, please don't hurt me. Almost immediately, we are treated to some enjoyable late night entertainment. What the fuck is happening? <laughs> it's just like home. My mood sufficiently restored, it's time to get down to business. My real reason for coming here is the hunky chunky man stood at the bar. We're lucky to have a trustworthy and level headed man such as Brandt on our side, as our situation here is rather delicate. Your Majesty. Thankfully, he comes to his senses, remembering that I'm meant to be a secret, taking us to a more subtle location in order to discuss things further. Oh, yeah, yeah, this is... this is incredibly subtle. No one will hear us here. I'm surprised this man remembers how to breathe. Grievances aside, Brant has some genuinely useful information. And even better, a plan. Long story short, we have three objectives to complete. Deal with a series of monster threats in order to make ourselves look cool, so we'll get invited to a party. A magistrate by the name of Walter has been imprisoned. Seeing as he's likely to support our rule, we should probably let him out. Finally, we need to partake in some breaking and entering, sneaking into the palace to find evidence of Queen Disaster's naughty behavior, so we can expose her for the cretin that she is. Objective number three sounds like one of the more exciting options, which at this point was desperately needed. So I head up to the palace. Arriving there, we are greeted by Sonia, a guard that was clearly taught everything she knows about subtlety by Captain Brandt. She escorts us in clear view of many witnesses to a back entrance. Not suspicious in the slightest, just look at me. Sneaking inside, I remain low to the ground 
of focus. That is to say that I immediately began looting the place. As the rightful ruler, it all belongs to me after all. We sneak through the palace, narrowly avoiding a patrolling guard, before heading through a large hall, finding a sweet-ass throne room, which looks reminiscent of Dark Sun Gwendolyn's boss room from Dark Souls 1. I can see why Queen Decentary wishes to remain in her seat of power. Reaching the castle office, we find the evidence we are looking for, conveniently left out on the desk. Yoink. They must have known we were coming. How kind. Unfortunately, however, we are interrupted by the gremlin creature from earlier, the one that was being chased by the phantom guard, who immediately guesses our exact objective. Could it be that you have come to bring mother's schemes to light? Decides that we are allies, it is clear that we are allied in purpose, and instantly believes that we are arisen, and not just a home invader. My word! You mean to say that you are the true Arisen? Mm -hmm. He is both the sharpest and the dullest spoon in the shed. The game then gently recommends that we leave via the window. Unsure of how best to approach our escape, I decided on a rather sound strategy that usually works out rather well. We run. This was apparently unnecessary, as all it did was make me look silly. Though in all honesty, this isn't particularly hard to do. The guards didn't really seem to give a shit, despite me having clearly just exited a restricted area. A firm reminder to never underpay your staff. One objective down, the magistrate was right next door, so we decide to swing by. Making our way down into the jail, the guards here seem rather chill as well. They don't even seem to mind us looting the place. Until they do. Oh, what? Luckily for us, the guard's incompetence was consistent, losing us after turning a single corner. Briefly distracted by a purring cow, we head back inside to try our luck once more. Fortunately, two minutes was long enough for them to forget about the whole situation entirely, as well as the appearance of the fugitive who'd just run away from them moments ago. Feeling a little lost, we get some directions. Uh, excuse me, sir, could you direct me to my friend? I have a meeting. <laughs> I see. Finding our magistrate friend, it turns out that he wasn't actually too fussed about leaving. In fact, it would take a room with a mountain of tomes before he'd even consider the idea. Alrighty then. Different pages for different mages, I suppose. I decide to do a wee bit more exploring. It was time to leave the city in search of somewhere with better frame rate and less stealth magic NPC fuckery. Back out in the wide world, we find some secrets, meet some saurians, or lizard men to us filthy plebeians, cyclops number three, a couple of guys and their zombies who are up to no good, causing trouble in the nearby woods. We then reach our first monster threat for the main quest, goblins. If this is all it takes in order to impress people around here, then maybe it's simply not worth the effort. Traveling even further out, we spot something a little more interesting. So of course, I immediately start looking for a way up. Just gonna save scum first, which honestly, lucky we did, because Steve decides to take a little tumble. Oh Steve, always the entertainer. Luckily for him, I'd never abandon my puppets to die. Well, shit. Flawlessly traversing the cliff's edge, we come across a rather unique summoning stone, giving us a higher level meat shield. For free. Nice. My favorite price. Who then immediately falls to his death, pulling Steve down with him. A higher level pawn doesn't always mean a pawn with higher intelligence. More lizard men, but purple flavor this time, until we finally reach our goal. The distant rock fella, a little less distant now. Are you Trying to play football with that boulder. His keenness for sport aside, we would have to do battle. Sadly, it's just the natural order of things. Quickly, Arisen, you must regain your footing. One hard fought battle later, and a couple of stones for loot. What else would a rock monster have? We leave. But not before this boulder can enact its revenge for killing their rock friend. What the f scared the living shit out of me, I'm too tired for this. Didn't know I was playing a horror game. Setting up camp for the night, our character demonstrates their exceptional cooking prowess, causing oh, the food itself God, to transcend God. into the material plane. Yeah. The pawns then attempt to seduce me. Our master cuts a gallant figure in the throes of battle, but is no less striking here in the campfire's glow. Very true, I know just what you mean. A strange, strange night indeed. Waking up the next morning, it turns out that ourselves and the pawns were not the only ones invited. Dissatisfied with their performance, however, everyone immediately turns on them. I guess they should have tried harder. Returning to the city, I recall a certain beggar quest that was still unresolved. Are we ready for this now? How's it oh, going? those garments you gave me had a marked effect. Albert set off to work the moment he saw them, and he's been working steadily ever since. So, 
Feeling a bit saddened by the lack of consequences, I had an idea. Reckon he's home. The real quest reward was yet to come. Ah, my fellow. How's it going? Hi. I thought I was being careful. How'd she find me out? I don't know. Bad luck seems to follow us everywhere. It couldn't possibly be anything else, as the entire city, all the way down to the lowly sewer rats, don't mind me. Oh, you do? We're now aware of our foul deeds. I have plenty of experience running away from my own problems, so this wasn't too much trouble. A few moments later. Well, would you look at that? Two minutes is enough time for everybody in the entire city to forget about the whole thing. I guess nobody else really liked the bastard either. Desiring a change of scenery and a less nauseating frame rate, we head back out of the city to make some progress on those monster frats. Bumping into our four Cyclops, but with armor this time. <laughs> Dude just got decked. We get to work dispatching him. And down you go. Damn. Detonating the skulls of bosses was a pretty satisfying way to finish them. Maybe I'll have to make a habit of doing that. Although that line of thinking is probably how serial killers end up with their names, so maybe not. We spot something interesting amidst two waterfalls, so decide to check it out. Turns out to be some bandits and a couple of chests. I tried telling them that it was rightfully mine, but they mustn't have heard me. I Assassin's Creed the ever-living fuck out of this poor goblin. Oh. Overwhelmed by how cool that was, the other goblin suffers a fatal heart attack and dies. Oh wait, they killed both? Hawk learns to fly, if only briefly, before spotting something a bit more interesting than a waterfall bandit camp. Yeah, that looks cool. We'd have to investigate. Coming up. Still saddened by the loss of our previous Griffin friend, I had hoped to come to an understanding with George too. Hello. Guess not. I think he's above my level. Get it, get it. I'm just gonna rest here if you don't mind. Up we go. There we go. All together now. Oh, okay, we got some spirits that have joined the fight. Cool. Well, the spirits are not helping, I'm sure. I'm coming up. Get stabbed. One second, if you don't mind. Yeah, I'm on evil. Keep it up. No. No. After an intense 12 minute battle with a griffin that we were clearly under leveled for, it flies away. I scream internally, but mark down where it roughly went. Well, we can't just ignore that and leave now, can we? Gracefully dropping down to investigate, we bump into something completely new. Oh, hello. Yet another boss. I didn't know it was my birthday. I've yet to meet someone who uh, fares well against explosions. Guys, come on. Just grapple him. You'll be so much better off. Case in point. Oops. Get up. No. Oh, okay. Get fucked. Kelgore, Skull Exploder Extraordinaire, at your service. Things were going great. I'm dead on my feet. One awesome boss fight after another, I was even feeling positive about our second monster threat. Oh. It's, uh, more goblins, huh? Though we do come across some new legwear that we can actually use. Hmm. God damn. Lacking a good enough figure to rock the femboy look, and lacking the raw confidence to just wear it anyway, we stick with the old outfit. Finally, we bump into some guards who can't seem to make up their minds on whether the goblins have yet been unalive. If you're fit to fight, give us a hand. Right, lend us your aid. We're in your debt. Scatter the goblins! The goblins are well routed. Regardless, that's another threat dealt with, so hooray for us. We stop by the city to enhance our gear and give Steve a fashion upgrade. Steve be styling. Ability upgrades for the both of us as well. We then head back out for the final monster threat, taking a different route from before. Bumping into various lovely characters as we go. I'm not interested. Shove off. Shove off. Sometimes you just have to laugh things off. <laughs> that said, the list in my book of grudges is growing at a steady rate. We pass one of the worst spots for a camp in a five mile radius, short of setting up directly in the river. Finding a replacement meat shield and a new wow. sexy fashion upgrade, we bump into our second ogre. These guys are pretty aggressive fighters, with several moves specifically designed for preventing or removing a risen size 
various nuisances, hilarious ragdolling sometimes included. They also seem to have a thing for the ladies. The explosion was ultimately responsible for setting up their demise, so I'm counting it. I'm your host, Kelgore Feller of Beasts, Detonator of Skulls. Arriving at a mostly abandoned village, also known as Free Stuff, which is probably why this merchant was here, let's be honest, it certainly wasn't for the sales. We make our way towards the back. We spot a dog sticking out from behind the cliff, so head towards it, where we once again display our superhuman ability of pulling the ground straight into our face. We find the senile Radu chilling in a shack who immediately starts telling stories. We're important people with things to do, however, so we don't have time for that. It was time to deal with the final monster threat, which, thank fuck for that, was not goblins. Heading on in, we immediately come across a small group of guards having their asses handed to them. We need help. In the very first room, I don't know who's in charge of hiring guards around here, but they're already fired. They just don't know it yet. Fighting through the cave, we come across a guard who's at least gotten further than the others, though I'm not going to get too carried away with the praise. I cannot seem to walk of my own accord. Would you aid me in reaching the entrance? Uh-huh. Resisting the urge to actually remove his ability to walk, we escort him back, bumping into a single group of lizard men almost immediately, followed by a whole bunch of nothing. Despite jumping down the ledge twice his height, he suddenly remembers that he has issues walking. Maybe it was the jump. Getting bored, we decide to try and hand it in without him actually being there. I underestimated you, friend. You've done well this day. Much to my surprise, it worked. Though I wish they would add these escort missions at the end of areas instead of 80 to 90% of the way through them. Two out of three of Brant's missions completed, and one likely requiring some advice from the man, we head back to the city to have a little chat. Returning to our top secret sneaky speaky no easy listeny location, we hand him what we can while getting a lead on this final mission. A place with books. Kendrick of the Gracious Hand is versed in many things. Perchance he knows of such a place. We are then given to more missions to replace the ones we just finished. Chasing down the lead on the Queen's recent Amazon shopping habits. The daily purchase of sweet crown flower. Mayhap this knowledge will guide us in our pursuit of the false sovereign. And going to a masquerade, which is more my style. But mayhap approaching the false sovereign at one of these gatherings could afford you a glimpse into the man behind the mask. As we're about to leave, we are met with a familiar scene, involving the exact same woman, but this time with a different bloke. Some people were just magnets for violence. By now, we had spent many an hour on the quests of others. We were due a little us time. More specifically, it was time to deal with my book of grudges. Or more accurately, a list of treasonous charges committed against the one true king of this glorious nation. After a consultation with the many voices, I had come to a decision. As a rational human being, capable of rational human decisions, I came to the only possible solution I could think of. Pella, for the crime of being rude to your future king. Azula, for the crime of being rude to your future king. Ordra, for the crime of being rude to your future king. Ian, for the crimes of tricking your future king into an escort mission and rewarding them with a lame, ugly cloak. Norbert, for the crime of including several wolves. Ulrika, for the crime of murdering George. A truly heinous crime. I often think of all the adventures that we will now never go on. Your rightful monarch has decided your fate. Yeah. Your rightful monarch has decided your fate. 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 Your monarch has decided your fate. Huh? Death. Justice has been served. 